You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boundaries are really set from me, like from the platform anyway. Like if that was going to make me a lot of money, then probably I would do it. You know, I'm very money yeah. orientated. Only fans girls as well, they're not porn stars. They're not always going to be great at licking your vag because they probably don't even want to lick your vag. Like it's something they just want to do for money. So there's not always that intimacy, I guess. But um, I do enjoy it. Yeah, like uh, sometimes you think, oh, this girl is bloody awful. When I started getting surgery, like it was all within a year, I got like a BBL, my boobs done, uh, my vagina done, and I could have kept on going. But, you know, those were all things that I felt like I had to get to be like perfect in this, you know, sex work job that I do and like be perfect and everything like that. And even now I'm like, I am not perfect and I'm still getting called ugly. So what was the point? So there's no point just keeping um, like changing yourself because anyone, no one's ever going to be happy with the way you look. So you need to be happy within yourself. If I don't reach 1 million views on a TikTok, I'm like, that flopped. Like that actually flopped. It could get such, like 500,000 and I'm like, I've like, this is the end of the world. And you know, I was always saying about, you know, me crying my eyes out at night to that. It was because I didn't think that I had pulled that off and that's why I cry all the time. I actually went to a therapist and like, basically they, they spoke about like work addiction. And I was like, okay, like, oh, fuck. But I thought it was like the like weirdest 60 pound of my life to be told that I'm like addicted to work. Um, but yeah, I came out of that session thinking, <laughs> You know, like, you c I could have told you that myself. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got El Brook. El, good to have you on. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Good, thank you. Congratulations on your fight. Thank you. Done well. Thanks. Girl whose social media is popping, TikTok, Instagram, you're a male's favourite, no doubt female's favourite as well. Yeah. Got a fascinating story, glad to have you on. First and foremost, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, it's been a busy day, but um, I'm excited, I'm going to America next week, so um, I'm doing work out there as well, but it's going to be good, like going to bush gardens and all that, so I'm excited. I always go back to the start for my guests, where yeah. you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, so, well, I was born in Portsmouth, like grew up around the area, um, I don't know, like had a all right upbringing I guess my parents split up when I was quite young um I think um my mum and dad were probably well I was like three years old and my mum was a lot younger than my dad there was like 14 years age gap and when she first had my sister she was 20 and for me I was 20 well she was 21 so imagine me having two kids like actual like kids mm -hmm. like I can't imagine that I don't know how people did that back in the day yeah it was old school models wasn't it 17 18 married kids yeah how were you at school? Um, I was okay, like good academically. Like I have good um, like academic ability, but um, as a person, probably not the nicest person in the world. I was like fat and ginger. Um, so I wasn't like confident within myself. So like looking back and reflecting upon it, um, I'm definitely a lot nicer person now, believe it or not. You bullied? <laughs> Um, I was like definitely picked on, yeah. Like if I showed you a picture, you'd be like, that is not you. Like I was massive, like huge. Um, yeah, I was not, like I was never the person that people fancied at school, which is quite mad, but. Send us a photo, we'll put it on the screen. Uh, sorry guys, sorry to break your screen. Is, uh, <laughs> was, is that, do you think that takes effect as a kid growing up, teenage years and stuff? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think, um, you know, it definitely molds you as a person, whether it be like who you hang around with, the community, where you're born, you, your parents, your upbringing, um, definitely molds who you are as a character. Was your dad around when you grew up? Uh, he was always there, but um, he, well, he started to get ill when I was probably like 10, 11, called like cerebrario ataxia, which is similar to, um, do you ever see the people do like the MS challenge? Yeah. 
or is that what's it called? Where like you lose every kind of like um, ability to like kind of move like slowly. Like it's similar to that. What's it the ALS challenge? Like it's similar to MS. So um, I watched him die over like a long period of time. And it was like, first of all, you know, having to use like a trolley to move and then like walking stick and then losing his license and then being bed bound and then in a care home. And then he died when I was 18. So yeah, that shit's hard. My dad was the same. He was leukemia. But he yeah. was a big, strong man. And after two years, you just see him deteriorate. Yeah. Part of you always thinks is they'll not die. They'll get better. Some miracle thing will happen. Like, yeah. Or you kind of hope that. But when they go, you, it threw me off anyway. Because like, it's just not enough time in it. Because you take them for granted. Yeah, 100%. But I think like where I was so young growing up, I think that, you know, it was like, where the internet was booming, like you're always trying to find uh, cures online, like whether it be mm. like um, like stem cell treatment, anything like that. So as you said, there's always that bit of hope, but I guess not everyone has that chance to recover. But he's had a good relationship before he passed? Yeah, as good as it could be. I mean, that um, it's hard growing up because when your family is split up and you live with mum, like you don't want to spend every weekend at your dad's. Like you want to go out with your friends. So... Um, like looking back in it you do i kind of wish that i did spend more weekends at my dad's but yeah you know you want to go out with friends and you want to be a teenager so it's kind of hard you see your videos and stuff like you're quite out there quite flirty is that the way you were growing up or is that just the character you've kind of became as you've got older more confident i think wow well, <laughs> i i i do love male attention and i've always loved male attention like um even as a teenager i think that once i kind of started not necessarily transforming but like started getting you know not being this like ugly fat ginger kid um so the attention was nice but um don't think it's really a character it is me and i love genuinely what i do i guess what was your first job uh my first job was in oceana like a nightclub when i was 18 um and i was a bartender and they didn't like to train me to be on bar so i poured ice and beer and i gave it to someone and he looked at me disgusted i just didn't understand at that time i was like oh you're not really meant to do ice and beer is not a thing <laughs> <laughs> well you're not at uni as well i heard yeah so i was at uni so um I went to University of Surrey for a year and then University of Southampton because I just wanted to transfer nearer to home, but I couldn't like jump into second year because the first year's like academics were different. Uh, but then I dropped out because I didn't any fans and I was like, oh, grass is greener. Is that why you never fo followed it through? Yeah, and I think that maybe I was probably pushing myself to be someone I wasn't. Like, I don't know if, you know, I did um, law at A-level when I got an A. So I just assumed, right, I'll do law. I'll be good at it. I'm going to be rich one day. Um, I don't think it was anything that I really had like a strong passion in. I just felt probably like I was, you know, going to be good at it and do well at it. So how do you go from studying law, A-level student, to yeah. then OnlyFans? How did um, that come about? <laughs> so um, I saw um, like premium Snapchat girls on Snapchat and it's a lot different than what it is now. Like OnlyFans wasn't as popular back then, back then, like three years ago. But um I was thinking, yeah, you know, I could do this. Like, you know, it's something I'd be good at. Um, so I first tried it and I was like just doing it faceless because it wasn't something that I wanted to pursue. Maybe like a bit of pocket money. You know how it is when you're at uni. Um, so yeah, doing a faceless creator. And I did that for a while. And then I started showing my face. And within two weeks, so many people found out. Like everyone in my hometown. Like I've been in every single group chat of every single person I've been to school with. And like their whole extended umbrella branch of friends. Um, so that was kind of shitty because that's the one thing I was trying to hide. I was like, yeah, I'll just show my face. No one's going to find out. And then two weeks later, everyone bloody knows. Yeah. And I got on a stick for it because um, it wasn't as normal then. Like it now, if anyone starts any fans, it's like, oh, just another yeah, another one. But, Tom Dick and Harry's got yeah, an but less people did back then. So it's like, oh, El Brooks is slagged, do you know what I mean? Um, but it is what it is. And I think that probably if you ask someone who posted me in a group chat now, whether they'd expect me to be as big as I am now, it's like, no, you know, they were probably yeah. mocking me at the time, but they see probably where I am right now. And I guess so many people message me, like, fair play, uh, well done on that fight or anything like that. So, you know, you were laughing then, but yeah. It is what it is. Like, you know, people just don't understand and they love to mock other people and just try to be funny, I guess. That's what it's like. It's, for people who don't understand it, then they become weird about it. Yeah. Like I say, back then, three years ago, four years ago, if you're the first to step on it and do it, you're the slag, you're the slut, you're the easy target. Yeah. What was the first bit of content you put on it? On previous Snapchat? Yeah. 
God, like everything, I guess. Like it, I never really went from a progression of, um, I know a lot of girls do like, right, I'm going to sell bikini pics and then topless and then pussy pics or anything like that. For me, it was always like to the point um, like porn. But then I was on my story. So, there's from, so from Snapchat, I met this girl called Chloe and she was like, I'm making 10 grand a month on OnlyFans. I was like, what the heck? Because on Snapchat, you pay a subscription like all-inclusive fee of like say 30 pounds and then they'd get your snapchat forever but then on a subscription like based platform it builds every month um and then the more subscribers you get and the more renew it's you know you get a lot more money um so i moved onto OnlyFans and then never looked back and i think it's a lot harder to do premium snapchat now how was that then for your mum to then she's thinking you're going to be a lawyer a class student buzzing proud of you yeah to be then tits out zero fucks given yeah new career path like, how did she accept that? Um, she wasn't too bad, to be honest. I was at my granddad's, to be honest, I didn't tell her for a very long time. Like, I started doing it in the December, um, just before my 21st birthday. And I didn't tell her till gone November. So the reason I actually told her was because I was at my granddad's birthday dinner and he said something along the lines of, like, uh, my nan did. Oh, you, how's uni going? And I was like, ah! I sell news on the internet for money. And she was like, what? And um, she genuinely thought I was kidding because I don't know, I'm someone that likes to have banter and pull people's leg. And I was like, sat there for five minutes like, nah, no. I know I, I know I joke a lot, but I'm genuinely not joking right now. I do actually do that. Um, but they took it quite well. Um, my mum's always been like really open with me. Um, she's not someone that's like overly conservative she's quite open so um don't get me wrong she doesn't go to the pub and be like hey my daughter's El Brooke. do you want to see what she does for work like absolutely not but um she'll stand by me and i really appreciate that so yeah that's the most important thing like did you think it would discredit you if you never had the support from your family no because i was doing it for a year anyway if so you you'd already established yourself yeah so i mean i wasn't you know the El Brooke i am today um but they hadn't all found out yet and, um, but, you know, that was 10 months after and I was enjoying it and I just started to quit uni at that point. So even if I hadn't have got their support, I probably would have still have done it. How did your friends and that treat you then? Yeah, I think if you met me now and how I was at school, I've always been overly sexual and, you know, always talked about sex and been open and um, from a pretty young age. So I don't think it really shocked them. So I think they're just supportive. They're like, you know, if that's what you want to do, then you do it and even now they support me and want me to do the best and they'll always be there so how many people were doing only fans back then do you know but uh when i first started i mean there still was a few i mean i'm like i'm not like the first top five mm -hmm. like there's still like loads and loads of people are doing it but it definitely blew up and became more popular after lockdown um but yeah definitely i think only fans was only running like a year or so when i started where you know it's like a five-year-old company now how do people treat you? Do people that obviously you get married men who were watching you on the fly and did they ever come up to you and try and talk to you or harass you? Uh, the only people that are really annoying generally are like young groups of lads. Um, like yesterday, me and Ben were at Westfield and I'm trying to do a TikTok. Like granted, it is a nuisance that I have chosen a really public spot because I know it will be a good TikTok because people are like, oh, you know, she's like, she's in the middle of Westfield making a TikTok. And they come up to you and they're like, oh, apparently you're a porn star. And you're just like, oh, yes, I am. Can I film this TikTok? And like, even if, you know, like, you know, you say a little like small talk, hi, lovely to meet you. They just stand there and wait, like, what's your snap? What's your snap? And they can be like quite persistent sometimes. Like I'm 24, you know, and I'm just like, oh, just leave me alone. And, you know, like sometimes people don't get the hint and they overstep boundaries because they think they probably think you are this like strange character online. They don't realize like you're a person deep yeah. down and even at johnny fisher's boxing um last week in sheffield like a really nice group of lads were like asking for pictures and i was getting pictures with them and people were walking past and they're like apparently you're a porn star apparently you're a porn star and they got like a picture like a naked picture of me and like showed was like going to show me but there was like um one of the guys i with i had a look like snatch his phone was like don't show her that and, like these guys were like 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 trying to fight the guy i was with like people are so like overly aggressive for no reason it's weird that, but guys see a girl getting her clothes off and they think easy targets. I know yeah. porn stars who are far from it, they'll do their job. Listen, they might be fucking shagging three, four guys on set. Yeah. But outside, they don't like speaking to anybody. Yeah. Are you finding that as the popularity rises as well, that you're then becoming 
not degraded, but people are kind of thinking you're an easy target because you're what you do for a living. Yeah, 100%. I think people are always going to, like, think that, oh, she takes her clothes off for money. Of course she's going to be an easy target. Like, um, she has no morals. She has no respect. But, you know, it's definitely not like that. What about stalkers or that? I, to be honest, I'm really lucky. I've never had someone um, to the point where it's been, you know, like um, in person. You get the people that online are like persistent and don't stop, but it's never been to the point where I've ever had to like contact the police or nothing, a block would ever um, mm -hmm. stop. But, you know, like touch wood, that never happens because that stuff's scary. When did you start blowing up? When did you start seeing a change in people from the girl who's just doing a bit of fun, making a bit of dough to then... Everybody talking about it, everybody watching your stuff, all the followers. Like, when yeah. did you start seeing the boom of it? Um, probably from the rise of TikTok, to be honest. Um, last summer, I had my Twitter suspended for like some copyright bullshit. And um, I was like so distraught. I had almost like, I think almost 500,000 followers. That's how I made my bread, like how I made my dough. Like that was how I made my money and I was, it killed me. Like as stupid as it sounds, like that social media account was my life because Instagram's always got deleted all the time. Um, that I was like, crap, what do I do? And on Twitter, you can't just make a new account. They will block every single one you make. It's just, I don't know if it's an IP thing or whatever. Um, so I was like, right, TikTok, let's try it on here. And then ever since that has been swift. I think that um, TikTok is like the most popular app, especially with, uh, young people um so ever since that it's just been crazy because it's kind of hit the ground running to be honest never been kicked off of that oh my god i've had so many accounts i think i'm on my seventh but i've had iml brook for a whole year now but to be fair before that i had accounts but they constantly got deleted because Why? i was always like pushing the guidelines you know like you even if you're trying to do innuendos like you need to play by the rules if you want to stay on that amp so i've learned to play by the rules but obviously you can still do a job you've just got to be more clever and subtle about it so what kind of content for your only fans how do you create your content obviously you're, you're not a porn star you don't class yourself as a porn yeah. star but you have sex and stuff on your only fans yeah of course so how does that come about do you, is it other people who work on only fans like how do you manage to pick the person yeah. you sleep with is it somebody else who's got content you share it like how does it work yeah most of the time you'll work with other creators and then you'll share it because that's the easiest thing because i think people assume you just have sex with everyone but you need to get these std tests done you need to care about your health and you want to make sure that the person you're you know literally sleeping with is a respectful person so um if you're sleeping with other creators then i guess that eliminates the chance of them being an absolute weirdo so yeah. most of the time they are like other like professionals because i know the porn industry they're tested every couple of days yeah it's like, mad have you got to make sure everything's above board and it's not just some fucking random who yeah you're trying to get content from exactly and i mean most of the time i film with other girls anyway it's only like um the males well especially this year it's only been like danny d or um johnny sins so <laughs> my caliber of men is like ridiculously high um so it's mainly <laughs> girls there's not many in the male industry but they're two of the biggest eh? yeah 100 percent. so um you know i've done kieran lee so i'm like who's next because girls there's so many famous porn stars that like, get female but males like you know i guess it's like you know that like you only need is it like one bull to like pregnant like 50 like female cows you know you know like in a farm they only have like one male that's literally what it's like in the porn industry <laughs> <laughs> like, just like one stud and like so much pussy <laughs> how's it how does that relationship come with them do they contact you or do you contact them do you just see that as a straight down business money maker they're big in the game yeah they'll use you that you use them basically um, I think both times, Johnny Sins definitely messaged me first. And this was like in COVID, but I couldn't go over to America because of COVID. Um, Danny D, I'm pretty sure he messaged me first. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I messaged him. But, um, you know, we knew who we were, um, each other were for a very long time. What about the porn industry? Have they never came forward oh my God, for your money? So many. Like every single one. Like Blacked, Vixen, Fake Taxi, Brazzers, Dog Fart. Like so many of them. Um, but, you know, you want to own the rights and the loyalties for your content because people catfish me right now and pretend to be me. I want to catfish myself when I'm 40. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to always sell my content. I even sell my, you know, my first sex tapes now because people want to see it. So, you know, this is something I want to be um, 
doing for a very long time. So I'll continue to sell all my tapes. I'll be sorted. How much are these companies paying? You know, I can't remember what uh, Brazzers are is, but I know that uh, Fake Taxi is like five hundred pound for a day. Fuck so like off! Lick Let some us. old man's bum hole and to get fucked in a taxi. And I'm pretty sure that is two scenes as well. And I mean, this is this isn't them offering it to me now. This was when I was first starting, but people love it because it's like gateway into the industry. Um, it's a stepping yeah. stone well, exposure. But God, you, I could never. And then you sign the rights for that for life. Like you're not going to make money off that it's 500 pound yeah. done and then the company gets you know all the loyalties and everything like because that. because i've had porn stars on and the, the first porn scene or whatever they do they get sold on five years ten years time they yeah. hold it back because if they crack it or they're massive they just then sell it on for fucking thousands hundreds of thousands yeah it depends how big they go because it's even is it like me at khalifa and like lana Rhodes still have like so many sex tapes because they've literally full-on quit and they still have sex tapes that have never been released because like companies know they'll make so much more money on them when they're more like you know like not fresh out of people's mind but mm. more untouchable i guess what made you not go down that route um because, because people will be thinking this it's kind of the same but it's not the same yeah. because you're, you're self-employed you're your own boss only fans which i believe anyway but yeah if you're trying to get in that industry, people do what it takes. Yeah. Really shag who they want to try and get to higher status. That yeah. For especially for a young girl, that like, you weren't obviously easily manipulated. I believe a lot of people in that industry can be manipulated as if it's a stepping stone, the right move. But by the time they're in their early, late twenties, early thirties, are kind of damaged. That like, yeah. How did you make that decision not to go down that route? Oh, to be honest, I was so close with filming with, I don't think it was Fake Taxi, it was like their umbrella brand. Um, like, is it Mind Geek? Um, but I don't know, I was going to go to Prague, I was going to do everything, but I pulled out just because, you know, I got scared that you don't, when I film an OnlyFans video in my bedroom or wherever that can be, I can cut out the bits I don't like. And if I'm feeling insecure or if I did something that, you know, I knew I didn't like, um, or I didn't want to be on the internet forever for life, then I have the power to cut that out and eliminate that. So um, I think it's a control thing. And as I said before, like I will always make money from that content. So to sell everything for such, it's, it's not not a lot of money, you know, like 500 pounds or someone is a huge amount of money. Like it, it's still a good payday for one day's work, but what you can make from a sex tape at your home and resell it for months and weeks and years on is you know it's like the long game much it's not you, just the immediate how much do you sell a sex tape for it depends what it is um my johnny sins one was quite expensive because it's johnny sins i think that was like 40 dollars. but um girl girl was only cheaper i think that's like 15 um boy girl sorry danny d you didn't make it. <laughs> it's like 25 um, so it's a little bit cheaper. So that's for subscriptions or people just want to buy it? Oh, so that's just the one-off fee of the video. So you get like a $15 base subscription. That's like the bare minimum. And then you can purchase added extras. So how does your OnlyFans work then? How is it levels? Is it tiers? How does it work? Yeah, so it's levels. So you get uh, still a good uh, feed um, of like, you know, it's like, pictures like naked pictures whatever like that but then if you want to buy anything like extra saucy or naughty um then you'd have to pay extra for it and i never used to be like that i used to have like an all-inclusive fee where i'd put all my videos up on my on my screen uh, on my feed that um but a you make less money i'm gonna be honest with you and b it gets leaked everywhere because people are just paying that 15 dollars to see every single video and they're just going to share it everywhere. But if you're having to pay $45 for a video, what's the chances that you're going to leak it, you know? Um, it's it's still going to be leaked, don't get me wrong, but it's minimalized. How many sex tapes have you done? Um, girls, probably like 40. Guys, um, a lot of them are with the same, like, guys. So probably, yeah, probably 60s. <laughs> How long does it take to do a sex tape? Because obviously in the porn industry, sometimes are there six hours, 12 hours, different angles. Is it the same for OnlyFans? Is it different? Are no. you, have you got a camera crew or are you just filming it? Um, no, a lot of the time, it will just be like a camera put in the corner and then you can get to it. Like I don't always like to have someone holding the camera and recording it. But the great thing about amateur porn, I think why I love amateur porn and I watch amateur porn is that you could grab your iPhone right now and we could make a video in the toilets for five minutes and that's how quick it would take. You know, you don't have to have that caliber yeah. of professionalism because people aren't investing in that. They would go on Pornhub and watch that. They're investing in you and the naughty things you get up to, whether that be like in your bedroom on a night out. They don't want you always looking fancy. They want to see like 
the real you. And my best sex tapes have been the ones where I've been like looking ugly, but people love that and they love the rawness of it. Do you plan out the content now as your obviously name's getting bigger or is it just a case of kamikaze job sometimes? Um, I do tend to plan it out now because, um, you know, like the girls you work with, all the men, it, it needs to make more sense because for me now, and it never used to be this way, it's definitely quality over quantity. It's not the amount of people you can fuck and film and then push them sex tapes out. It'd rather be, for me, people um, that I know I get on with and I love and I genuinely want to work with and it be less. Um, like I, I had a club earlier. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I've gone straight <laughs> from that to here. It wasn't uh, me. That's not how I'm sweating, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, with um, Hex Girls. So, um, yeah, it's been busy. So I haven't worked for a very long time, but last Friday and this week I had two collabs. And that was with a girl? Yeah, both with girls. As I said, I'm really particular. I don't know what it is now. I think um, this sounds really bad, but I've had some sex tapes I really regret making and you can't take something off of the internet. And it's with guys as well that um, it's really put me off just filming with anyone. Because, you know, and especially in porn, I, bet, I, I can imagine that's the same for a lot of people, that there's always going to be scenes that they didn't enjoy or like, like walk a chin back. So at least now I have that power that whatever I make, at least I know I'm going to want that on the internet. What's your biggest seller? Is it with a woman or a man? What's your uh, subscribers love? Definitely with a man. I guess that's what they want to see and that's what they want to imagine. Can they message you as well? The fans? Yeah. Yeah, of course. You might, do you ever get right creepy bastards? Yeah, of course you do. Like, uh, you, but you come immune to it. Like, it's not something like you lose sleep over. You know, everyone's horny and they have fantasies. And I guess they think, you know, this person behind this keyboard, aka me, is just someone they can vent to. I get absolute creeps on that. But, you know, the majority of my subscribers, they are so lovely. And a lot of them just want to chat. They tell me all about their days and like what they had for their birthday cake flavor. You know, like anything, like... You know, they just want someone to speak to. So um, it's nice getting to know people as well. Have you had any weird requests? Weird requests. I get weird requests all the time, but weird to me is a completely different weird to you. You know, like I get asked to like poo on camera, I get raped by ghosts, do like all kinds of like weird things. Like is there's like so many things like that is like off like crazy. Like, like I mean, people even like incest. I'm like, ugh, you're like, you're gross. Like, like, hopefully you're not practicing that in real life and you just jerk off to, like, fake videos of, like, step bro porn because that's, that's tapped. Yeah, because I had Sophie on. Like, I love Sophie. Like, she's, uh, once you actually understand her story, you see where she's came from to what she's doing. Now you get a better understanding of her life, but she shites on her, man. Yeah. She shites on her, and I'm thinking, like, that, I don't mind about the shit, it. but I appreciate the honesty, <laughs> but... That's just a bit fucking, that's just next level shit, that. It's a bit <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Was that, yeah. would there ever be any amount of money for you to go shite on me? Um, yeah, I'd shite on you for like not that much money, but if you would have to pay me a lot of money to shit on me. Because that, I think that's, that's, that's definitely where my boundaries are. Um, yeah, pee I could do. Yeah, that's a piece of piss. Yeah. Yeah, golden It's shower. just actual feces that it's just something about it that just makes my stomach turn. Yeah. And try acting sexy at the same time. It's all about <laughs> acting. <laughs> I had a dominatrix on as well, and that was like the guy's fetish, man. She's shanting a dog bowl, and he's sitting eating it as if it was a bowl of Rice Krispies. Yeah, there are some strange people on the internet. It's funny, though, because my job is not to judge people. My yeah. job is to interview people and get an understanding of them and their life. Everybody on this planet is different. Yeah doesn't necessarily mean it's a fucking right thing to do, but everybody's different. Everybody's got different yeah. fetishes. You're talking about top judges, lawyers, politicians. They, they go weird. Yeah. But it's each to their own as long as you're not harming anyone. I don't yeah. give two fucks. What's, um, where's your boundaries? Where would you say no to? Um, so that is, I think I've always pushed my boundaries from like early in my career in that sense. I mean, I wouldn't do who because anyway you can't sell it on a sex tape like that's something you're not allowed to do on any fans and even technically pee you're not allowed to but obviously you can squat and everything like that so there's definitely is the blood you know like any kind of really like um intense like fisting or anything like that so like boundaries are really set from me like from the platform anyway like if that was going to make me a lot of money then 
probably I would do it. You know, I'm very money yeah. orientated. Um, but if you can't sell it, then what's the point? So OnlyFans has got limits. I don't know. Yeah. I thought it was a fucking free for all, if I'm yeah. honest. No, it has limits. And there's like um, certain things you can't do. Like you can't like um, put pictures on there, you and out in public, which is obviously to like protect other people. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of it has to do with like the banks and MasterCard and all their policies. Do people give you money just for tips and stuff and then do they ever request anything for you to do in videos or, or mm. how does it work? Yeah, you can do like um, additional content um, that people pay for. Like people pay for anything, like a video of, I guess like a cameo, but like a rude one. Um, anything, like feet pics, like drawing your name on something, armpits, belly buttons, like you in the shower, like you sat in like pink underwear eating crisps. Like people ask the most random requests and like if you're getting paid to do it, then why not? They just want to see you. I think they just like you being you're like a little puppet that they can yeah. just make anyone do anything, which... How are you going to find the balance then from amateur porn to then TikTok? Because your TikTok's popping as well. Your videos are great. They're fun. Yeah. Kids will watch that. But because it's two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where do you go? Like you're in the middle now. Is that a crossroads you're at? Are you just enjoying doing both? Are you thinking about doing one and not doing the other? No, I definitely... Um, like sex work is like who I am essentially and it's something I really love doing but that is my what I'm trying to do actually crossroads because I want to become more mainstream I don't want to just be known as this like only fans creator or a porn star or a porn actress adult actress because I think that can pigeonhole you into only so many opportunities whereas if you branch 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 out and be more generalized and more mainstream then it's going to give you more opportunities and brands will want to work with you and essentially it's going to bring you in more money um so that is you know my goal and I, I hope that's working to be more of like an online personality that does only fans rather than an only fans girl that does tiktok see when you're sleeping with women men do you ever grow a connection or is it just cool to it because I've asked porn stars this, like, do you enjoy it some of them don't some of them still do but it's hard if you're doing it all the time does it, do you lose the buzz for it if you know what I mean I think uh, my favourite thing I don't really get it with girls but definitely with boys like I get dead nervous before a scene I don't know why I think maybe it's because I do less of them but it's kind of like you know, you're with them and then all of a sudden you're on a fuck I don't know if it's just like the masculinity of like the other person um, but that's you know, there's not always a connection there. To me, I think even from a very young age, I've always distinguished the like lust and love of sex. Um, and with girls, so I, ha I like, I enjoy having sex with them 100, percent and that's why I'm so picky because I know they're going to be good. But with girls, I mean, I've slept with men and guys, men and guys, guys and girls in the past for sex tips that I haven't enjoyed. But recently, everyone I've worked with, they're hot, they're amazing. I mean. Only fans, girls as well, they're not porn stars. They're not always going to be great at licking your vag because they probably don't even want to lick your vag. Like, it's something they just want to do for money. So there's not always that intimacy, I guess. But um, I do enjoy it. Yeah, like, um, sometimes you think, oh, this girl is bloody awful. What about um, relationships? Yeah. How do you struggle to keep a relationship? Like, I suppose all men will accept your job. It's a turn on for a lot of people. It's a lot of fetishes, but... As men, there's a controlling nature's kicking in it. So yeah. how do you manage to keep a relationship, if you can, with your job? Is that hard? To be honest, I've not really, like, had anything serious, so it's not really affected me. Like, I've just kind of been, uh, like, focusing on work right now. Like, you know, like, you have more relaxed uh, relationships or, like, open relationships, but nothing too serious right now because it's where I'm at. I'm not looking for anything too serious, so... um you know, my heart's not broken if a guy can't handle my job or anything like that because right now my only vision is work and to be like the biggest version of myself. Have you ever had your heart broken? Have I ever had my heart broken? Um, a few times when I was younger, but then was that love at that point? I don't know. When you were 16, crying your eyes out, eating ice cream. I don't know if I can call that love. Um, but to me at that point, it definitely felt like it, yeah. What about having kids for the future? Um... Do you think that'll be hard as well with your job as well? Because a lot of porn stars, my friend Georgia Lyle, she was a Scottish porn star. She's got a beautiful son and she doesn't really care. But then obviously when you start growing that family life, then the conscience is a mad thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you ever think about that? I don't know if you want kids for the future, but does that play in your mind? Um, I mean, it is something I've thought about, but I don't want 
like it's something that's not in my vision right now because I don't want kids for at least I'm like 33. Like I want to build my life. I want to build my career. I want to build a foundation that if I it, if I had kids, you know, people will make fun of them or whatever, but and then I'm driving a Ferrari, you know, like to mm -hmm. me that would be um, not revenge, but you know, like would ease off the guilt, I guess, because you know, you don't want your kids to be picked on and it is, you wouldn't, you would want, your kid having the best upbringing ever because you know I finished school I was I was not the nicest like kids are nasty they are like like bullies and school's not a nice or easy place to be so you definitely do think about that and you know how you doing what you do could affect them so I do think yeah. it is something you need to be conscious about but then you need to be open with them as well but being bullied in the past and stuff you said you were the heavier kid ginger hair that now it's an extreme. It's not just one or two pe persons at school. Well, now you're talking hundreds of yeah. people who control it. How do you do? You think being bullied at a younger age has helped you have thicker skin to deal with things now, or do you never really get used to people being bastards? Yeah, it's hard because you know, like I've always kind of welcomed the hate in a sense because to me it's easier to like laugh it off and not like go and cry about it like obviously then our, our, the comments do affect you like even like, at the beginning of this year every single tiktok comment was like bulking bulking season bulking tips and i just used to make tiktoks like bulking season's nearly over you know like you'd have to make fun of it like even though i, I was never bulking i maybe put on a few pounds but tiktok is absolutely ruthless like I, right now i get called brock lesnar all the time <laughs> i mean i kind of do see it so i do you know i get where they're coming from but you know like like mid like clapped like everything like that and like i did think about this the other day when i was in bed i was like it it, it doesn't make me lose sleep but it definitely um it's probably changed uh how i think about myself like i probably don't look at myself and think you know like i don't think oh my god i'm really attractive because you know i'm I'm not trying to be attractive because that's what I've been told, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not out here being like, oh, yeah, I'm like a really sexy TikToker. I'm focusing on just trying to be funny and do my job. Like, if people call me, like, mid and not attractive and everything like that, then, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay because that's how I already, like, reflect upon myself. Yeah. All the years that like, you've probably dreamed of being in this position, like, fighting yeah. in front of thousands, only fans popping, TikTok popping, but they still get the insecurity thoughts where you don't feel good enough. Yeah, of course. And I think this industry is hard because you're constantly comparing yourself to other people um, and you want to be the biggest and you want to be the best. And this is a job that you get paid on your look. So if one month you didn't do as well as the other month, like it makes you question yourself. Like, did I fall off? Like, am I not doing as well? Am I not good looking? Um, but yeah, it is hard. And I've thought about getting so many plastic surgeries and everything done Um to me, my face and my body and everything like that. But there needs to be a real, like a, a, you need to get to a position that you're comfortable within yourself to start because where does the line draw? Because when I started getting surgery, like it was all within a year, I got like a BBL, my boobs done, uh, my vagina done, and I could have kept on going. But, you know, those were all things that I felt like I had to get to be like perfect in this you know sex work job that I do and like be perfect and everything like that and even now I'm like I am not perfect and I'm still getting called ugly so what was the point so there's no point just keeping um like changing yourself because anyone no one's ever going to be happy with the way you look so you need to be happy within yourself so uh, I guess. Uh, how does somebody get their fanny done what, what happened there <laughs> um so I was really conscious about my vagina and I get that it's perfectly normal and everyone has like different vaginas but you know you always see people like mocking like outies or like meaty fannies kebab fannies <laughs> everything like that and it mortified me it absolutely mortified me and I would I just like comments and stuff like that they're the ones that really stuck because that was also always something I was really self-conscious about so I was like I, I can't have this dirt I need like a perfect porn star vagina which doesn't even exist like tiny innies like that's not a perfect vagina but you know even now I get men like being like oh I like a bit of meat you know like you should have kept it so you know you're never gonna please anyone um but you know I'm happy with the way it looks now and I'm glad I got it but it's just you know like I wouldn't have never have got it if I wasn't in the porn industry so what did they do they literally just cut they put fat on the outer parts to make it fatter because I've got lipo there <laughs> and they cut off the insides so like the labia is like in now not out that's but, mad isn't it yeah and you got and you made that decision and that was an insecurity that was in your mind or somebody commented 
and young like, ran with both. it. Both. Like it was always something something that I was really insecure about. Um, but then, you know, like I think just seeing comments and everything like that is, you know, it's when someone points out an insecurity, it 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 does hit home more because that's something you're already conscious of. Whereas if people are calling you more like random or like generalized being comments, uh, like they're easier to brush off. But if you're already feeling insecure about something and then someone points it out, like even if there's a thousand lovely comments, if there was that one comment that you saw that was there's something you're, you know, not confident within, like that sticks. What's the worst thing anybody's ever says? Worst thing? Nothing, it, like, do you know what? Like nothing sticks to mind because it's been so many years of so many things. Like constantly getting cool clapped. Like you look like a man, you look transgender, uh, your legs are fat, like your jawline, you've got massive chin. Like so, everyone who's always been so mean about my looks and everything like that. So I think you become like immune to it, I guess. You know, like nothing ever, I've never thought, oh my God, in 2019, this one tweet, like it's just so like, immune to the hate i guess because it's something you read every day how do you move on from a down day because we all get them no matter how successful or how much yeah. money we have I, I struggle fucking two or three times a week like, and you have to push yourself to keep put kind of going on because it's no point it's sitting sulking like yeah. no matter what you achieve or what money comes in the material the material is yeah. shit is all bullshit anyway it doesn't fulfill whatever's missing inside is like, like how do you move on from a down day because you, you clearly get your head screwed on you've got a good yeah. energy about yourself like you're not I speak, to, I speak to a lot of people that's in the industry and you can see a lot is broken mm. totally fucking broken with the childhood that like you've had a decent childhood you've just found, found an avenue to make money but how do you then kick on from a down day if you, it really gets you like comments get you and you're just fucking drained with it like I, I, I cry so much like so much and I think that it's just like as bad as it sounds, like like you think you're at rock bottom, but everything normally gets better. But it's easy for me to say because I'm in the position I am. Like if I'm feeling crappy that day because something's not gone right or one TikTok didn't go well, like there are, you know, other people out there that, you know, I think that just like empathize like the position I'm in right now and that it will get easier. And like everything is only like temporary. Like when I wake up in the morning, like nine times out of 10, like I'm feeling better. It's just like having like a, like a, like a mood and then it being re like reborn the next day, like into something great. So, um, but usually I kick steam off if I go to the gym or anything like that, or if I'm feeling sluggish, cause I have this really bad habit of if I'm feeling sad or crap, I eat. Like it's like food. I think that's why I was just fat ginger kid. Like food has always been my comfort and I've got like a really bad relationship with it. Um, so I eat myself to death and then like the next morning I try and go to the gym, start the new day fresh. Because if anything goes wrong, like crying and eating is like my first go-to. Yeah. Is there anybody you can speak to as well when you're feeling, having a down day? Yeah, I have a lot of good people around me. So I'm very lucky in that sense. How do you, obviously like I've said, you've got your hair screwed on, but when's that enough? Like yeah. you say 33, maybe want to settle down, but a lot of people it's in the industry can't get out for some reason. Mm. Do you ever feel as if, because you don't want to be in late 30s, 40s, listen, each to their own, but I'd imagine the longer you do it, the more tiring and draining it would become, try to just pay bills. Like, when is a cut-off point for you? Have you got a target in your head? Or is it just, I'll do it till I'm early 30s and then change career paths? Or what's your plans for it? I don't have like certain milestones that I'm thinking, you know, quit by this time, buy a house at this time, you know, have kids. Um, like nothing like that. But I still, and like the sex industry right now and how I'm doing it, I'm happy doing it for like the foreseeable future. Like, um, don't get me wrong, I don't want to be doing it forever. Like, hopefully, I can lean on my other avenues like TikTok or if boxing lifts off or anything like that. Um, it would be good to use other in like avenues. And I guess that's why. Um, for me, I'm trying to branch out and trying to do different things. So I don't just have to rely on the OnlyFans forever because I know for me, that's not something I want to do long term. So I'm definitely trying to like diversify. Um, what would you like to do? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no one goal. Um, I just want to be the best version of myself and the most successful version of myself and whatever like Elbrook becomes. Um, but what that may be, I have no idea. 
Do you feel confident enough that to kick on in your career in your life? Or has it got to be the insecurities kick in again where you need to get more work done? Or, like, I struggle with views. Like, we have millions of views a month, YouTube, downloads. And if I don't have a certain number, I think sometimes the abandonment issues kick in. You don't think you're good enough. Yeah, 100%. It's fucking weird, man. I, I, I used to hit 10,000 views on a, a YouTube video and I'd be buzzing. Yeah. Now if I'm not getting past 3 million, 4 million views a month, like you're kind of, am I not loved anymore? Yeah, um, did I fall it, off? Yeah, and there's never any, it's fucking hard to explain, but there's never any, I don't know, you can, I don't know if I'm appreciating it as much because it, now it's a business. Mm. Now it's, it's, it's just become a job. Like, do you struggle with that if you don't hit a certain amount of targets or views? You think pff, abandonment issues kick in, insecurities kick in, yeah. I don't, I'm not loved anymore. Yeah, hundred percent. If if it is, this sounds so bright, but if I don't reach like a hundred, hundred, if I don't reach one million views on a TikTok, I'm like that flopped. Like that actually flopped. It could get set, like five hundred thousand, and I'm like, I've like this is the end of the world. And you know, I was always saying about you know me crying my eyes out at night to that. It was because I didn't think that I had pulled that off, and that's why I cry all the time because I just don't think I've done good or I've done better enough and you know you always see people around you doing great and not that you're jealous of them but you're thinking why am I not doing that like why am I not achieving the same results as them so it just makes you go insane and I think that like success is like one big circle and it's not linear like it's up and down and you're always going to go through these patches that don't um always go straight forward and to plan um that's just part of the journey yeah. um but yeah just it is hard when you put so much pressure on yourself because i want to say that i'm competitive in every single thing i do as well like as bright as it sounds i want to be the biggest i want to be the best i want to be the best version of myself that when you have that mindset you're kind of like setting yourself up to fail because you're never like what is the best yeah like who what is the end goal and especially when you don't have one it's like what are you trying to achieve? So I am my own worst enemy, 100%. Yeah, it's constant pressure. You yeah. don't enjoy the journey. Yeah. I get this guest, get these views, and then it's okay. You're, you're buzzing for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, then it's on, constantly on to the next. Yeah. I want to be the biggest and the best. I believe I am. But yeah. I still levels to go to crack, go to America, do other things to then take things levels. But you, you've got to believe it before you've got it or else you've never put it into existence. Like, but it's just constant fucking pressure. Yeah. Do you enjoy the journey? Like, wake up and go do you know what it's a good day or you just constantly try to create more i am so stressed out all of the time like so stressed out because i do put that pressure on myself to be like who i envision myself to be and when i'm not getting there or like quick enough fast enough then you know it only upsets me and makes me frustrated but i mean like sometimes i look at where i've come in this journey from like three years to like now like it's just so crazy. And I think, you know, when I said about the dream, about like being mainstream, like the amount of people going up to me like, well done, like congrats on winning that boxing match and everything. So now it's not only just like, oh, you're that girl from TikTok that like, even if my, you know, my earnings are not like this, like my vision is going like this. So it's about, you know, it's to and fro. Um, but I think I, I definitely need to be a lot easier on myself. Like I'm so hard on myself. Like if something doesn't go well, I beat myself up about it. I don't think I'm good enough. I think I'm ugly. I think I've fallen off. I don't think I'm funny enough. Just I scrutinize myself so bad to the point it gets me so like low and deep that, you know, like, but I just managed to keep pushing on. And I think, you know, that is my one drive, like being competitive and I like, wanting to be the best that gets me pushing on. Because no, like you can't, no one's going to do it for you. You have to do it yourself. You ever spoke to anybody about it? Um, I actually went to a therapist and like basically they, they spoke about like work addiction. And I was like, okay, like, uh, oh, but, but I thought it was like the like weirdest 60 pound of my life to be told that I'm like addicted to work um but yeah I came out of that session thinking <laughs> you know like you, I could have told you that myself yeah. um she was like going through the five senses and stuff but obviously there was other issues in there but to be told I was addicted to work I was just like you know like have you tried putting your phone down like it's just don't want to hear it it's a major addiction and I was just saying I went to see a therapist there Last month went four or five times. Yeah. And I just, because I, I want to enjoy the fucking journey. Yeah. I don't feel as if, because I'm constantly trying to level up. I'm constantly trying to prove. I don't know if I'm proving myself or other people. I don't know what the fuck, who I'm trying to fucking prove. But 
spoke to him a few times and it's just the same shit. I just don't feel as if he understood. Yeah. That, because you've got to be, I wouldn't say possessed, but it's an obsession. Yeah. But I've got addictive personalities. I've fucking changed so many, but this has become an addiction and I'm scared to stop because when I stop, the demons kick in. Yes. The voices get louder. I can't have time off because I go insane. If I'm not doing, like, I will literally end up walking around my house on my day off, like, going crazy. Like, I always, like want a day off and need a day off and then I have it and I'm like I hate it you know it's, it is an addiction I guess in case you've forgotten yeah exactly like I what's yeah. that day like then for on your day off what do you do absolutely well if I was eat <laughs> I'm so addicted to food yeah. so bad it's either work or food um but just sit and watch tv and not do my makeup or anything like that because you know it's always makeup every day try, try sorry try to look your best every day though you want to have days off and you want to, you know, be slob. Um, so that's why I appreciate doing it in my spare time. Do you speak about that stuff? Or is it Because all your videos are bubbly, very outgoing, yeah. happy, smile. But do you ever talk about the deep stuff, what people can understand and relate to a bit? Like, life's not all fucking rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. Um, I hate speaking, obviously, about the hate because I don't want to show weakness. I think that... For me, that was the lot, you know, you're giving these people what they want. Like, they want to see you broken. They want to see you not want to get up and make TikToks. They want to see you fail. So putting that out there, you know, I, I, like, I'm like i worried and I'm scared that that's what, um, like, you're giving them what they want. So I've always kept that quite, like, separate. And I just, for me, I don't really feel like... You know, let's feel sorry for Elle Brooke. Like, she's got a few nasty comments online. Like, I don't want to be known as that. I want to be someone that's, like, positive energy. And I want that to be my brand because that's how I try keep myself away from it anyway. Like, if I was constantly, like, responding to hate or highlighting the hate, um, to be honest, I think that would make it worse. Yeah, because fucking words kill people, man. It pushes yeah, people with suicidal thoughts and not feeling as if you're good enough. Like, I went to see the Elvis film and they fucking, the most successful fucking musician on the planet like everybody knew who he was he'd done a live audience 1.5 billion people watched it and he had a breakdown with his wife and says what if people forget me yeah and this was the most famous man on the fucking planet like yeah. we're nowhere near that level but it just shows you there's, it's never ending like you say it's just a big circle you're never going to be satisfied always use Tyson Fury's prime example as well yeah. he won all the belts had all the money had all the fame but had the biggest depression of his life yeah suicidal put on 10 stone yeah because there's never there's always something inside a human that's always fucking missing because like, we there's no blueprint or manual what the fuck we should be doing in life we're all winging it yeah. what you're doing I'm doing Ben's doing like we just don't it's not is this what it's about because there's always it just doesn't feel right sometimes we'll have our moments it feels okay but then when you actually sit with your own thoughts you think what the fuck is it I'm doing you question everything do you ever sit and think question everything you've done as well yeah sometimes I do think how could my life be different if I never did this but I'm so content and so happy with the position I am now. Like, obviously, I've made mistakes and, you know, there's things in my career I wish I never did or films I never made or things like I what films? I know you're, like, trying to ask me people. There's sex no, tapes. Yeah, yeah, but what ones, like? <laughs> there's, like, sex tapes I've made with guys that I just think I really regret that being on the internet because just... They, I don't know what, they make me want to puke inside, like even just thinking it right, about it right now. I think when I first started, especially, I just wanted clout, I just wanted money, I just wanted a quick payday. I just was desperate to get this content out and, you know, make money. That um, I did these scenes and on reflection, it's like I don't even sell them now. I'm that like repulsed by them. <laughs> like I can't... I they're done like I wish I could take them off the internet but they're there and you can't take them back so um but I just look at that as like a life lesson that just don't do that again like double, yeah. double don't rush into anything um which is what I've learned now but hindsight's a wonderful thing we can't exactly. change the past but like you say we can fucking learn from it you've done amazing like 24 you've got your head screwed on you're making a bit of dough you get called up to fucking fight in a boxing match, sold out arena. Yeah. Done great, but congratulations. I know AJ, she's a wee scrapper as well. Tough man, like two weeks notice, you've got to take your hat off to the girl for yeah. taking that fight, especially with you training with world-class trainers, world-class fighters. Like you were a tough opponent in the beating for somebody to take up that, that you got the takes courage. Like how did that come about? Was it another a girl you were fighting with in a nightclub or some shit? 
Yeah, so long story cut short. So um, I got DM'd by Kingpin, the, the boxing organisers, to do an event. And um, I was like, yeah, I really want to start boxing. And they said, do you have anyone in mind? And I was speaking to my manager, Chris, and uh, we thought, you know, Astrid wet because we're so similar. Um, you know, like brand by brand is very similar. So you know, that would be make the most sense to like make this beef and everything like that. So um, I DM'd her, spoke about it. I remember going around her house, like talking about it and how we're gonna create all this fake beef, everything like that. And then even, you know, you said about the nightclub, like I went to her house before, um, went to Mr. Miyagi's for five minutes, like stood in the corner with like everyone texting, being like, okay, Astrid's walking past now, like go past here to do a fake fight to then leave, to go back to her house. Um, but then everything changed when, um, you know, we were doing an Instagram live and she doxed me. So she told everyone like, I lived in Portsmouth, my real name was Crystal. And I think you know, like people don't really understand what it means for a sex worker to have um, like a fake name, like it's something that protects you against your family. Like people, you don't want your real name out there. You know, it's someone um, that's isolated because sex work can be so dangerous. Um, so her doing that, I think, uh, yeah, I think it was just fake beef that went too far because you're always gonna cross the boundaries. I think when you wanna get one up on an argument, lines are gonna be crossed. Um, and for, for me, she really, really crossed the line, um, because she didn't gain anything from it. I don't think you, you're like, what do you get out of telling the whole world? Oh, she's lying to you. Her real name's Crystal. Like, like so many porn stars have fake names. I didn't make this up because I'm trying to deceive anyone, um, that it was just nasty and spiteful and it didn't make her look any better. And I could have right then, right there been like, your real name is, but I didn't like, that's not something um, I would have done because um, I know how it feels. So, um, I, you know, I didn't fight fire with fires. So why did she do that? I, I, I have no idea. You know, after that, we still, um, I think there was still a good four weeks until she pulled out of the Kingpin uh, event that we never really spoke about it. And the next day, her manager texted me and was like, um, hey, uh, uh, what time do you want to announce today? Rah, rah, rah. Like, I don't think they even knew, like, the severity of it, you know, because now I've got people on TikTok being like, ha real name's Crystal and everything like that. But um, that night, oh, I came off that live. I went straight for a walk in the woods. It was like pitch black at this point, like getting dark basically. And I was out for like hour and a half just walking around the woods, like burning off steam, crying my eyes out. Because for me, I had built up this brand for like three years and Elbrook was my life. Like, you know, like I'm addicted to work. This is this is my child. For someone then to like give away information that I had kept so uh, secretive and like mine for three whole years to be burst, um, you know, so unexpectedly when I'm on a live and everyone can see my exact reaction killed me. Like it's like having my pants pulled down and like public. Like I felt so exposed and so vulnerable. And yeah, I just felt like Elbrook was dead to me that night. And I think Why didn't you fight her? What happened? Uh she pulled out for numerous reasons. Uh claimed I was on roids. Uh, lots of, you know, to and fro on that sense and that the Kingpin event was um unsafe because there was no head guards, but there was you knew that. And there was no drug testing. You knew that. That was all in the contract. But, you know, I, I, I can't speak for her on why she actually pulled out. Only she she knows that. Um, but, yeah, we yeah. didn't fight. So it's, it's you were training is. with some of the best, like Big Johnny Fisher, who I love to bits. Yeah. Ebony Bridges, love to bits. Uh, Tibbs, like your coach. Like yeah. A lot of great names there. Like yeah. How was it? Innocent young girl, like only fans, yeah. trying to make something of a life. Listen, it to anybody that wants to get in and fight, it takes so much courage. I don't give a fuck who you are, amateur, whether it's you're fighting, like, to go under those ropes and have a tear up, it's it's because you're nervous. I don't give a fuck who you are. Like, it's nerve wracking. Oh, Even the, the biggest professional pressure. still gets nervous because yeah. your pride's on the line, your ego's on the line. Like, you're, you're putting yourself totally out there because everybody wants to see you get beat. Even yeah. the people closest to you, the fuckers. Like, yeah. How was it making that decision and sticking to your guns? And was that to just prove everybody that? you could do it or what, what was your, your method of thinking? 
Yeah, 100%. I think I've always been a bit of a fighter anyway. I've had a sister that's like one year gap. So we've had fights. I've had fights at school. I've always been like um, an overly aggressive person, like in nightclubs. I've had scraps. Um, so it's something that I was never like, oh, boxing, never. Um, it was something that really interests me. And, you know, I think boxing is one of those things that's so great because people will want to win if they love you or they hate you because they want to see you win or they want to see you lose. You know, there's 50 50. Um, but it's something I'm really enjoying and being in the gym. So I definitely want to keep at it. I was at the gym today. Um, so yeah, I'm in love with it. I'm in love with the discipline it's given me because it's definitely changed um, my life like 100%. How were you feeling on the run up to the fight? Do you know what? I was so confident until the day of the fight. And I think that's because you've got, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Like I knew I, I always thought I was going to win, but I genuinely thought I was going to knock her out. But that's just me being naive. Like, you know, you always think you're going to do something, but it's for two minutes, like, you know, and especially with an opponent that's not, is completely different to you and has got a tactic to do that, was the best possible tactic against um, your moves and your offense. So, um, yeah, that day, because you got to wait around all morning, all afternoon, sit, watch the other fights that it builds up and the nerves build up. And when you can hear the crowd and you're doing the ring walk and you hear thousands of people screaming, you know, and you think, what about if I don't got this? <laughs> yeah. The other boys that were fighting, man, they seem to be going back and forth with the fucking words as well, like heavy stuff, like a lot of Edge hatred there, yeah. yeah. Did you know these two beforehand? Um, not, um, I know them through the event and to be honest, both boys actually seem like, I've met Simon fully, like he's been to my house on TikToks and everything like that. He's sound. And Ed, I was always a bit cautious on, but I saw him on uh, like one of the press conference days and he was on his own. He was actually really nice. So, um, I do, I do like Ed. I think my perception probably changed him. You know, like you're like even I'm guilty of it. You prejudge people, yeah. um, but I can only you know speak of how he treated me that day, and he was like really nice and everything like that. So how did you feel when you won? Um, I have never been so like I have. I hate that fight. I can't even watch it back. It makes me cringe from within. I am so disgusted by the performance and I didn't do better. Like I watched that back and I know I'm better than that. And I think I'm so addicted to being perfect that when I watch that back and I can see that it was far from perfect, it kills me from the inside. So, you know, I had that fight on the Saturday and I wanted to be back in on the gym on the Monday, like like working out and trying to better myself up and be a better fighter because looking back at that, when people come up to me and they're like, good job, you did really great. I'm like, that was one of the worst performances I have ever seen. Like I have been so like scathing, I think that's the right word, of that performance. I mortified, I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> but you won every round, did you not? I won every round unanimously, unanimously, but I didn't look like I could fight and all my months training and everything like that, like it didn't show. And for me, like I wanted people, I really, really wanted people because I love it so much to be like, hey, like Elbrook's a really good fighter. And I just think um, I didn't get that response with so it killed me from within. So. How was the response after that? Um, I mean, it's been great. It's been good. Like, um, Did that boost your followers for OnlyFans? I, yeah, I had a really good month that month. But that wasn't the reason that I did it. Like I always like to challenge and I always like to test um, myself. So, you know, boxing is one of those things that I can challenge myself because I get comfortable and I get at a, like a plateau, but I always want to exceed um, and excel. And I think also having that like healthy lifestyle um, is addictive for me as well because I feel good. Uh, my mental health's better because I'm training, I'm eating well, I'm focusing on myself. Um, and when you're in camp, you're not bothered about that party on Saturday because you're thinking, how would you feel Monday? So you're very driven and you're very focused. So I think it's definitely made me become a better version of myself. Yeah, seeing you were doing the training, did it make, because when you exercise, like, there's the natural chemicals, it's yeah. a feel good factor. Like, did you feel your life was a little easier, more content when you were going through? A lot, pushing yourself to the extreme, like sparring is fucking scary. Yeah. So when you do that, you feel as if you've accomplished, accomplished something and the buzz lasts a little longer. Like, did you feel more content when you were going through training? 
the first few weeks were absolutely hell because you've got just got some random OF star from the street into the gym. I'm in mean, like boxer. I was unfit. I wasn't conditioned to it. So the first few weeks are going to be hard when my body's adjusting to eating healthy, exercising the amount of, I did. I even got like sick because I think I was just pushing my body so far to the limits that um, it was just, you know, starting to wear down. Um, but after that, yeah, the, the effect that exercise can have on your mental health. And I think that that's why it's really changed my view on doing like not drinking, being healthy, you know, focusing on yourself and how you treat your body and how you view life, I think. Where do you go forward for the future? They're still young, do you know what I mean? But is yeah. more fights coming up or hitting America? What's the plans? Yeah, hopefully a fight um, in November. But it's just finding the right opponent, everything like that. Um, so I think there's a few people in mind. There's one person that I really want to fight, Tana uh, Mojo. But we will see. Um, yeah, it's a lot easier for guys to find fights because I think guys are naturally masculine and I'm like... You know, I want to fight everyone. Uh, whereas finding a woman fighter is going to be, you know. Yeah. I think it's becoming more popular, though. I think people are seeing the effects and the buzz it has. And it's such a good feeling that like, every man thinks they can fight. I don't know about women, but every man yeah. thinks they can fight. Like, as soon as you put them under, a, put a set of gloves on, their asses go. Yeah. But like, you realise what you're made of. Like, not to quit, not to pull out. Like, and you just keep going. Like, yeah. Like, for 24 and have your head screwed on and seeing the vision, but being very open about your struggles as well. Like, like moving forward when you've got all these plans, like how do you how are you going to balance that? Do you see yourself becoming more content or do you just feel as if it'll be more pressure in the future because the bigger you're going to go? Um, you know, it's hard until I get um, to that hurdle. I think the work balance I have right now is doable. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I have to cancel plans with my friends regularly. Like, I have to make sacrifice, but I'm not to the point yet where I'm going to explode because I still can have... A holiday here if I need it after camp or anything like that um but it's what I have to give and what I have to do to become the person I want to be so if it means working harder and doing more then absolutely I'll be up for it because for me that's just one step into being where I've like my vision of who I want to be what about America how where do you go from there if you get in America it's 350 million people there like, yeah there's levels compared to the UK like if you get visions for America I have thought about moving to LA um and I probably would have would have um before the boxing but now I'm very content within my gym I love Ebony Mark Johnny that I wouldn't want to be like yeah let's start boxing and then be like move from like like such a good camp and team to go to america so for me it makes sense for me to be here right now but i can still go and work do my bits in america work with people um collabs and everything like that whilst being here so whether i'll end up in america one day we'll see but for right now um i can still do what i'm doing and grow whilst being like based here yeah El, listen for coming on today and telling your story babe but like, yeah. i appreciate it and um but for anybody that's maybe sitting and about a struggle just now what advice would you give for them i would say stick to your guns and believe in yourself and if you want to do something do it and i think that if you have that small business you want to do pursue it because i always believe that if you even earn less money being self-employed um you will be more happy genuinely than working for someone else for say i don't mean like a massive gap then obviously not and like a like a wage difference but you know if you have that opportunity to for work for yourself, do it because I think that's definitely made my life 100% better. Also, like pigeonholed is your advice. <laughs> for your social media links, your OnlyFans, how can people get in contact with you? Yeah, OnlyFans is Elbrook UK, Twitter is Elbrook UK, Instagram's the Dumbledore, and my TikTok's also the Dumbledore. Not that all these men will know, they all these perverts will know it's watching us anyway, your links. <laughs> but listen, El, I wish you all the best for oh, the future. Got water in my no. head. Yes. Great person, great energy, and I genuinely mean you all the best for the future, babe. And you, Thank my little you. workaholic Take pal. Care.